Hello folks and welcome to today's episode of the Well Teacher Festival. Um, if you're anything like me, you probably blame a great deal of um, lines, stress, lost sleep, uh, feelings of anxiety down to epic proportions of marking. Um, and perhaps, like me, one of your kind of return to work philosophies is that you are not going to spend quite as much time poring over pointless red pen marking. So the perfect man to provide us with a roadmap on how we can get that balance and make feedback much more productive for both ourselves and our students is Michael Channels. Now, Michael is the author of the excellent book, which is The Craft of Assessment, um, which, is a, which is a brilliant book on how we can make assessment more effective in the school environment and in lots of different aspects of education. He has also, he's also obviously a very productive man, he's also got a book published again by John Catt during in November, which is the amazing title, The Feedback Pendulum. A Manifesto for Enhancing Feedback in Education. So, in this fascinating talk, Michael asks us to consider and reflect on the marking mayhem of the past before outlining a series of really practical principles of what makes more effective feedback. Um, and he spends quite a bit of time reflecting on what the language of effective feedback looks like and also how we can build a kind of classroom philosophy that's centered on feedback. And I think really, really helpfully, he also considers kind of how students will be feeling after the lockdown process and the kind of feedback we might want to give them in the first few weeks. At the end, he also, um, I, I absolutely love this phrase, he also unpicks what razor sharp feedback might look like, which is brilliant. Okay, I think you will never look at marking in the same way after this presentation, and I hope that it will help you find some sense of balance that works for you and your students in the year ahead. Thank you. Hi all, and hope everyone's well and having uh, an enjoyable summer as a break. Uh, delighted to be able to present this short presentation for Jamie for this Wellbeing Festival. And uh, the focus of my presentation is on feedback and I suppose the role of feedback as as we move forward into September into a, a time in which probably is a little bit unknown for everyone um, and therefore the possibility of sharing some strategies and some ideas to help support you guys as you go into the new academic year. I think from from my own perspective I was reflecting back on my own time and practice over the last couple of years and actually reminding myself some of those core principles that I think are really important and I will try and aim to really focus on as we move into September again and try and I suppose maintain some consistency. I think that um, everyone is feeling the pressure and um, that uncertainty but going back to those sort of basics and for me those core ideas of what, what, are, what are we doing as teachers, what's the main aim we want to teach to the top we want to scaffold up, we want to ask lots of questions, we want to give um, timely feedback and we want to engage with uh, parents and other colleagues to support pupils to be the sort of best they can be. So in terms of what I'm going to focus on, it is on sort of feedback and, and that idea of, of feeding, using feedback to feed forward. And I think it comes back to that point, and, and I've talked about this before, about this particular analogy, this, this picture, of this idea that actually, when we give pupils feedback, the type of feedback we give them can, can, can be variable. And over the sort of lockdown period, a lot of that feedback has probably been in the form of feedback through maybe uh, Google quizzes or other forms of online quizzing or online testing platforms that maybe you've used as a school to support that sort of learning process during that time of lockdown and probably also there, there has been some opportunities maybe for some 
some live teaching sessions where you've been able to give sort of feedback but that has probably been targeted and and not necessarily that sort of that holistic approach to being able to to sort of diagnose where pupils are at at that point in the lesson like we know we can in the classroom and actually it becomes incredibly difficult and I personally have found it quite difficult to give pupils um, the sort of the feedback that I wanted to give them I was I found it quite challenging to articulate that feedback in particular through the through the online platform but I suppose this this analogy come back to what I was saying that this analogy really is the idea that when we give feedback whatever that form is whether it's verbally or written or through an online particular platform that feedback will vary for every single pupil and actually that process of enabling them to feed forward could be relatively short for some pupils or it could be or could be uh, a little bit more extensive it could be longer period to enable them to get to that sort of learning goal where we want them to be in terms of the original learning intentions that we had for them and therefore that route could be very different for, for each individual pupil and I think we should be mindful of that as we go back in September and actually the feedback we give them will vary and the time which pupils may need in order to enable them to feed forward will also vary and we should take that time we should allow pupils to get back into that routine of 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 the school environment and the classroom it goes back to those I suppose those core principles that i've talked about and feedback fits into that core principle of craft this idea of condensing learning giving pupils opportunities to to use your your expert explanations and turn it into powerful notes in order to use those notes to then be able to reflect on their learning and this is this idea of using a combination of retrieval practice which will be really important potentially in september they are that time that they've had in lockdown we can use the retrieval practice sort of strategy to really unpick and and unravel where where our pupils are at in terms of their any potential knowledge gaps and there's plenty of opportunities there to use that sort of uh, retrieval practice activity at the beginning of lessons as Rosenshine talks about in terms of that daily review and weekly review and use that to really help inform planning as we move forward in the in the coming months and then the idea of assessment using regular formative assessment strategies over summative assessment and that's going to be really important too too much emphasis on the potential use of summative assessments such as a baseline or or a recovery assessment may not be as effective and actually it's probably going to be more effective if we move towards an approach where we use lots of formative assessment to really diagnose where pupils are at and those knowledge gaps. But in terms of this sort of focus, this session, it's that idea of feed forward and that target driven improvement that will really help once we've diagnosed where pupils are at through the formative assessment, we've used regular retrieval practice and spaced practice activities, we can then provide that necessary feedback to feed forward through those target driven improvements. And I think it comes back to what, what we've maybe seen in the past and what I've seen in the past. And, and it, it, this is the wellbeing festival. So I suppose we don't want to get back into that trap of lots of marking um, and because we need to catch up and because we need to know where pupils are at. And, and that would be that would be a backward step. Uh, next month as we move into the academic year if we went for an approach where we were going to see some of the marking mayhems of the past that egocentric driven marking the deep triple marking using different colored pens getting pupils to to correct work the idea that the quantity of how much teachers are are doing in terms of marking is quality over or is king over the quality of that sort of marking and that potential with these with, with the current year 11 and, and the new year 13 is that, is that idea of giving lots of marks and grades. And we know from, from research that actually it's more powerful that if we strip back our feedback and, and focus on those target driven comments related to the, the sort of concepts and processes 
that we wanted pupils to, to demonstrate an understanding of in their application task, and more importantly, uh, in terms of the skill that we wanted them to be able to do. And that, that, that idea of a regular extensive feedback assessment. Yes, we want to use lots of formative assessment as we move forward in September, but we don't want to cloud that with lots of summative assessments to take and capture lots of data for data drops that may not necessarily be valid or reliable or helpful as we move forward into a bit of unknown. And I suppose it comes out and, and this, is, this is from that workload review, which um, the independent workload review by the government, and they talked about the idea that quantity of feedback was confused over the quality marking had, had become or is or was a vital element of teaching, but when it's ineffective, it can be demoralizing and a waste of time for pupils and teachers alike. And I worry that in September, that that could become an element of, of teachers' time. And actually, less marking and more feedback would be more beneficial. Marking of work almost gives an indication that's the end of that piece of work and actually it's finished. And that there you go, there's your mark. And actually, we want to use that towards the end uh, of, of the academic year and we want to use that less frequently. That cultural challenge of spending hours marking and we could definitely fall in that trap in September to catch up. That there's no one size fits all approach and that's really important and I think as we move forward in September we should we should allow teachers to have that autonomy to to know what type of feedback strategy is going to be more effective in their classroom and help their pupils to sort of close that knowledge gap. School should aim to shrink the importance that marking gained and we'll look at and then talk about like some of the other opportunities. Providing written feedback on pupils' work has become disproportionately valued by schools. And really that, that's key as we move forward. So in terms of the perception of feedback, the perception of feedback we know varies a lot. And some of the research shows here that there is various concerns, I suppose, for both pupils, teachers and parents about what actually is the value of the feedback they're receiving. And I suspect over lockdown that the value that potentially the feedback they receive would have, would have varied. And maybe some pupils would have felt quite lost during that lockdown period for, for various reasons. And therefore, some of these concerns may manifest themselves in the first couple of weeks back. That idea that the feedback's not very clear, they don't understand it. For, for many pupils, feedback does not show them how to improve their work. The purpose of the feedback is unclear. There is too much feedback. Often we talked about the quantity as teachers and, and it can be sometimes a, a feeling that we need to give them lots and lots of feedback now to help them move forward. But in actual fact, it's probably more beneficial to pick out that highest leverage sort of point, action point for them to be able to move forward and see some progress in, in working towards those learning, so, so those learning intentions. The feedback is too late to be helpful, criteria is unclear, and the feedback comments are demotivating, or there is little opportunity to discuss the feedback. And then we think about teachers' concerns. Pupils do not read the comments. Pupils are not interested in receiving the feedback. Pupils providing or providing feedback to pupils is too time consuming. And we talked about that before. And that will come out of the workload review in 2016. Difficult to decide how much feedback is useful. Unsure the best format to provide feedback to pupils. Pupils don't know, how, know what to focus on from teacher feedback comments. And we do not know how to, how to get pupils to understand the criteria. And then I've added in here, and that this is addition to the research, this idea of parental concerns. And there's going to be a lot of parental concerns um, as we move in September. And the idea that pupils will have had a different diet over lockdown and therefore they will have their own concerns about where their child is at in terms of progress. And especially for those that are moving into year 11 and year 13. So they may have the concerns of too many subjects to grasp what my child needs to do for, as a parent. Comments to a child are unclear. Um, I want to know whether my child is on or off target. 
and I want to know what my child needs to do to improve and achieve the target grade. So that whole perception around feedback as you move into September will have different concerns across the different groups that are involved in that process. So Hattie and Clark, we know talked about feedback as being that information provided by the agent, whether that be the teacher, the peer, the book, the parent itself, or the experience regarding aspects of one's performance or un understanding. And that actually, as we move forward in September, we can see that, that there's, a, there's a potential to use the, the power of feedback and feed forward. Feedback focus on the pupil's current performance, but that feed forward looking ahead to provide those constructive pieces of advice on how to do better. And actually, lots, lots of time we do give pe pupils feedback on that piece of work, but we don't actually give them the time to feed forward to enable them to make improvements in subsequent pieces of work. So when we consider our feedback in September and beyond this idea, again from Hattie and Timby, that we want to be where we're going, what are the goals, goals, so clear goals, clear structure about the, the learning intentions and the success criteria. How am I doing or how am I going? That feedback, where am I at in terms of those learning points and those, those assessment criteria that we've set and where to next. And that's that important bit, that where to next and how do I get there? So we know that there's different levels of feedback. We know there's task levels. We know there's the process level, the task level, how well a task understood or performed. And that comes back to that clarity in which that task is set. And we think back to, to those, those core aspects of, of what am I going to do in September? I'm going to teach the top. I'm going to scaffold up. I'm going to ask lots of questions. I'm going to give expert explanations. And that task level comes in under that aspect of how well has it been explained? Is the task clear? Is it understood? And it may be that we need to take a little bit more time. We need to slow down the way in which we explain those tasks in September as pupils get back into the swing of the classroom. That process level, what was the main process needed to understand or perform the task? Again, what was the key attention? What was the aim? What was the success criteria? And that's self-regulation. And that's, that's probably going to be an important element of how can we support pupils moving forward, especially if, if we enter into another lockdown or all those local lockdowns where schools potentially need to shut again. But how can we support pupils to become more reflective or self-regulated learners? How can they use our feedback to feed forward uh, independently through some guided practice? So I've talked about, and, and I talk about this in, in my new book, this idea of what, what are some of the core principles as we can use for feedback this idea of it being timely the difference between the delivery and the space for pupils to respond and that's going to vary and will depend upon the task that the pupils are performing that idea of building that receptive culture and we may need to sort of spend a bit of time again in september sort of working and and uh, reinventing that receptive culture and developing that again and bringing that back to where it was before. The idea of providing that granular feed, that, that razor sharp, that concrete target, not lots of targets, but one actionable target from that piece of work that's gonna have the biggest impact for that pupil to move forward. The idea of self-regulation, we said that, create the conditions for clarity of instructions, share those intentions, learning intentions, share that success criteria. It's not about pupils writing down the, the learning objective necessarily, because we know that that's not effective. And it's not about them writing down the success criteria, but they need to have an understanding of what is it that I'm expected to do. Um, and that fluid aspect, and that's going to even be more keynote sort of in September as we move forward next month to return to the classroom, that continuous flow between the teacher, the pupil, the pupil, to pupil and also teacher to parent. We want them to have a clear understanding of where am I at, where, how am I doing, where am I going next. So Butler talked about the power of feedback and we've, we've I've mentioned this already that when feedback provides task specific comments there were fewer negatives or negative consequences and it helped to enhance pupils performance. So when our comments are, are focused on the task itself and not devoid on some general comments, then that they were more effective in enhancing that pupil performance. 
So some strategies as we move into September, the language of our feedback. So this is going to be ever more so important as an assumption that people are receptive to feedback. The feedback they've received during lockdown may have changed their, their perception of feedback. And we may have to do some work to create those right conditions, create that culture to get that receptiveness going again. Uh, build that resilience to receive and encode and process in the advice. They may be feeling quite down as a result of, of lockdown and may feel that they have made little progress potentially, or, or be even if they have done, they may not feel they have. And, and we as teachers will definitely feel the same. And, and we need to work uh, together with, with our pupils and with teachers to sort of rebuild that resilience to receive and encode and process in the feedback. So we don't want them to, to be overwhelmed by it. We want to invest that time in, in potentially creating a feedback charter whereby we, we give them the conditions and, and, and set the standards of, of what we're looking for as we, as we move forward. And then that idea of the razor sharp feedback. So we don't want to give them lots and lots and lots of comments as we get back in the first couple of weeks. They're, they're going to be, we don't want them to be inundated with lots and lots of feedback, but we want them to be clear about what they need to do to improve. So we're going to give them some clear actual targets. So that razor sharp granular target that's going to be to have the most impact. And this idea of, and, we, and that idea that effective feedback specific granular targets focus on the next steps feedback focuses on the sort of elements of the work that demonstrates understanding with constructive sort of comments to direct that improvement so we're really focusing on what can they do as a geographer what they're going to do as a historian to improve that piece of work and then create as we said creating those opportunities of the self peer assessment to encourage people to take responsibility so Duet talked about this idea that when teachers praise pupils for intelligence, this can then reinforce a fixed mindset and students who receive praise for effort or process feedback tend to show great engagement, motivation and improvement. So we know that, and Dylan Williams famously said that as, as student, soon as students get a grade, the learning stops. So we may not like it, but that's the research and that's the stable feature of how we work. So if we go down the route of lots of summative assessments, there's going to be a focus on well, what grade am I on or, and so forth, rather than what do I need to do to become a better historian, to become a better geographer, to become a better mathematician and scientist and so forth. And we really want to focus on that in September. So this idea of combination of using assessments, so infrequent summative but frequent formative, and if we're going to use assessments, we want to have clarify or clarity in what excellence looks like before, during and after an assessment task through that modeling process. We want to provide feedback that allows people to self-assess and reflect on their progress towards the learning intentions. And then we want to allow sufficient time for pupils to act on the feedback. And that's going to be really important, giving them that time to really act on the feedback. We may fall in the trap next month that, oh, we've got lots and lots that we need to catch up on. And therefore, we're going to rattle through the curriculum really quickly, quickly, so we can get to the point where we need to be because we've lost all this time. And actually, we need to take a step back, slow down. Jamie has always talked about the idea of slow teaching, which I think is really going to be important in September. We don't need to rush. It's better to take our time, slow down, give pupils that time to readjust set those um, standards that have that culture in place and give them time to act on the feedback because if we move too fast then we're just we're just going to be giving them lots and lots of feedback and it having little impact on learning so i've talked about and, and credit to jen monk because she came up with this original idea of this overview sheet use of assessments so to reduce the impact of of the time spent on feedback in, in September using these sort of feedback sheets where the focus is on um, the core aspects of what they needed to do. And in this case, it was a particular set of questions on uh, UK landscapes and coastal landscapes, focus of what was the core concepts and processes that I wanted to understand, red, amber, green, where are they at in terms of that element, what they're going to do if they're in red or amber, 
and that conversation with home as well. So linking up with home and having that conversation about what is it they need to do to improve their understanding. Remember those that, that stepping stones at the start of the session. What's the feedback? Where are they at? How many stepping stones do they need? And what, what will those stepping stones be in terms of that, that support to improve and feed forward in, into getting as close to those learning intentions as possible? Using knowledge reviews can be really powerful. Quick sort of low state quizzing and then using sort of potential knowledge reviews so people can self-assess and peer assess where they're up to. And then again, what are the next steps? What are they going to do? plenty of opportunities for them to consider if I'm down at that lower end of the mountain in this case in this context of this feedback sheet how can I get to the top how we're going to take responsibilities to help close that sort of knowledge gap and the use of whole class feedback and again this can will, will really help to reduce the time spent giving feedback as we move forward into the new academic year and focusing on what the common misconceptions as as a class as a collective group of students do i need to reteach something before i move on or do i need to pull aside a small group and do a little bit of intervention with that group whilst the other group are moving on uh, to 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 reinforce their previous understanding of something or to to develop a, a deeper understanding and that can be really powerful we don't want to spend lots of time writing the same comments on, on pupils' works, we know that's not necessarily the most effective use of teachers' time. And, and I've I mentioned this already, that idea of taking time, slowing down, and giving pupils the right conditions in which to effectively and constructively implement the suggestions that we make. Verbal feedback could be really powerful in September. Lots of opportunities to use verbal feedback to redirect pupils, reduce those misconceptions and those mistakes settling in can help to really reduce the amount of written feedback that we may need to give to pupils, give them thought provoking questions on their performance and on, on the particular work and, and not specifically about that pupil. And that can allow to really reduce the time. And then the use of visualizers as well and credit to Jack Tavisley Marsh, whose who school worked a lot on doing verbal feedback and using visualizers to really unpick and unravel and model and share excellence and, and share where there are gaps in, in, in answers and responses and work together on how to improve them. That could be something that, that could be implemented and embedded and, and, and worked on in the new academic year to help really focus on the idea of how am I doing at that point again, where am I going? What's those next steps? And that this 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 use of verbal feedback could be really um, a useful tool moving forward. An idea, and, I, and I've talked about this idea about how we should triangulate the feedback with parents, pupils, and teachers, and create the right conditions in which to have that consistent conversation all the time about where pupils are at in, in, in their sort of learning journey for the individual subjects. And again, credit to Kate Stockings here for the sort of parent care book review, that idea of, of giving, giving time to, to create conditions for pupils to, to work with their parents, to share where they're up to and really help to have an understanding of what they need to do to move forward. And I suspect that maybe, I mean, me as a parent over lockdown, found it quite, quite challenging. And knowing where people might, might sort of know where my daughter and son were at in their learning. And therefore I know that there's some value in, in spending that time to share those opportunities with home and really help to make parents consultation evenings and any, any, any reporting or, or telephone conversations more focus in, in what they need to do to, to, um, to move more along that learning journey to all those in, those in terms of those in learning intentions. So to wrap up, um, I know I've, I've probably rattled on a little bit here. Um, I hope it was helpful in that sense, but sort of feedback top tips, 
for September, place a greater emphasis on, on the providing feedback, on providing feedback on the process of the task, encourage an active conversation relating to the intentions of the of the assessment task at the start before they before they begin. Provide pupils with those comments to feed forward to close the gaps between the performance and the desired goal of the task. Don't see that task as, as giving the feedback and that's it. We want to, want to close that, that feedback loop. Provide that razor sharp granular feedback that enables pupils to close the knowledge gap. Don't overwhelm them next month with lots and lots and lots of comments. And then focus on providing that task specific guidance instead of that, that numerical feedback. So I hope it was helpful and I hope that the start of the new year is, um, is, goes smoothly, goes really well. And uh, I wish everyone the best for the next couple of months. And a big thank you to Jamie for organising this wellbeing festival and asking me to be a part of it. So hopefully uh, see you, speak to you soon, virtually via Twitter or, or whatever else and, and uh, enjoy the rest or whatever's left of, of your summer holidays.